to talk about uh, the cotton nematodes and FOV1 or Fusarium wilt variety trials for 2020, and then move on to talk a little bit about FOV4 if um, you haven't heard of it. So Fusarium wilt is a fungal disease that has an interaction with root knot nematode. So if you have root knot nematodes in your field, you might be uh, exposed to Fusarium wilt also. And the symptoms might look like it uh, similarly, but um, basically what you can see is a little bit of stunting in your field, also wilting symptoms. And then uh, if you go into your field and you pull some plants and slice it open, Fusarium will cause that necrosis in the vascular tissue. So if you take a look at the center of it and it looks dark brown to very dark black color, that might be uh, Fusarium wilt in your field. And as I said, uh, the Fusarium wilt race one and two, which are the ones that we have worked with, they do require the root knot nematode. So without the root knot nematode, you will not get Fusarium wilt race one and two. So how can you tell if you have FOV1? So you know that every morning you just drive around and you take a look at your field, so that is very important that you keep an eye on your fields every, um, ev across the season or during the season. Number one, if you have root knot nematode, that is your first check. So if you have root knot nematode but you see something slightly different from every year, that's your first check. Number two, um, if you have some dead patches. So usually Fusarium will looks uh, or the symptoms grow in patches. It could be like in a linear or more into a circular kind of patch, has the picture that in, in the middle, so you can see some circles on the sides and some deadlines. Those patches could be an indicator if they are not in flooded areas or something like that, it could be an indicator. So that's your second check. Number three, if you have wilting plants near those dead patches. So is there something that survived and you see that wilting, um, like in the picture there, and it is not directly related to water stress, then that will be your third check. And then your fourth one, you have to go out there and pull some plants, slice them open, and if you see that vascular necrosis, then that is your fourth check. And you might have FOV1 or two in your field. And over here, how can you tell if you have root knot nematode? If you take a look at your root system, then you will see some um, galling, and also over here, some galling that is due to the root knot nematode. So we decided to run some uh, variety trials, taking multiple varieties from all the big players in the market, and these are some of the results. We had two collaborators, one in Hall County and the second one in Cochrane County. And over here, you can see on, your y, on the y-axis the lint yield in pounds per acre over here. And it's represented by the blue bar. And then the line is the amount of nematodes per 500 cc of soil and all the different varieties. In this location, the top yielding variety was phytogen 480W3FE, which last year was also kind of the higher spectrum, but not every year might be the top yielding variety. Uh, but it's always in the higher yielding spectrum. In this case, uh, this variety uh, yielded more than 2,000 lean pounds per acre in this location, which uh, Rick Fuston has a, a lot of water and he waters very well, and that also helps definitely to, to give good yields. The second one was Stoneville uh, 5600, which Dr. Wheeler mentioned um, also in her presentation, and it is a very good variety also, uh, followed by Phytogen 400 W3FE, and then Phytogen 545, and the fifth one was Stoneville 49, 46 GLB2, and in this case, um, this variety is one that we have recommended over the years. It's usually kind of that in that higher yield spectrum, and also it's able to uh, control the, the nematodes and yield pretty well in a high fusarium wilt uh, field. I just want to draw your attention very quick to um, this variety, Fiber Mass 1621. If you see the amount of nematodes in the field was actually the highest in that location. And uh, just to keep in mind, the fact that one variety is able to yield very well in your field, even though under pressure, that does not necessarily mean that next year it will yield the same way. 
Because if you have root knot nematode issues and you are not addressing those or fusarium wilt and you're not, you're not addressing that, the next year it will accumulate to the problem. Even though you will not directly see it in the yield in just one season, if you keep growing a susceptible variety over and over, then it will accumulate and then it will become a problem. One day you will be limited to just a certain varieties. So moving on to the results of, uh, at Cochrane County, we had the lean yield again in pounds per acre, all the different varieties, and we tested about 40 varieties in that location. This is also an irrigated field, but with way less water, and uh, the amount of nematodes is the purple line. So in this location, the top yielding variety was Fibermax 1730 uh, GLTP, which carries that root knot nematode resistance, followed by Phytogen 400 W3FE, similar uh, the results in Hal County, and then uh, Estonville 4946 GLB2, and then Fibermax 2398 GLTP. Um, and in this case, you can see how those top yielding varieties that have the root knot nematode um, it will lower the amount of nematodes in your, in your field. So you will address that issue with those varieties compared to the susceptible ones that will have a very high nematode populations. And in this location, fiber mass uh, yielded about 1,100 lean pounds per acre. And this picture you can see on the left, this is a susceptible variety, and this was taken last year at Howell County. And then on, your, on the right, you have a resistant variety. And look how different they look. Uh, the one on the left has a very poor stand counts, uh, where the, there was a lot of dead earlier in the season, and this is a direct result of the fusarium uh, presence in the field. While on the right, this is a root knot resistant variety that did not allow fusarium to come in that much and was able to yield pretty well. So moving on to FOV4. So uh, we just want to raise a lot of awareness. How many of you are considering to grow Pima cotton this year? Anyone? Maybe you, you don't want to say? Well, some of our farmers are looking to uh, move to grow some Pima cotton, and we just want to raise awareness about FOV4, uh, which Pima cotton is highly susceptible, but also upland cotton is highly susceptible. So uh, this is basically the same fusarium wilt, but it's a different race, it's race four. And race four does not need root knot nematode, so it can go and infect and cause a, a huge damage without the presence of the nematode. And one of the things is uh, this disease is actually seed transmittable. So if the seed is infected, you will get it in your field, and also it can be spread by the movement of soil. And in this picture over here, these are cotton seedlings that are susceptible, and you can see the wilting very early. This picture was taken 21 days after planting. So FOB4 is very aggressive, and it was reported in El Paso in 2017, and then in uh, the neighboring county in New Mexico in 2018. So it's kind of moving around, and just keep your eyes open if you see something kind of um, odd in your field. We can go ahead and take some samples and test it if you have any concerns about FOV4, which it will cause, uh, in the plants that are able to survive, it will cause that necrosis also in the vascular system, similar to FOB1 and 2. So we decided to do some uh, variety testing. We only picked four varieties, two Pimas and two Uplands, one susceptible and one resistant each. And in this case, we took uh, Delta Pine 357 and Phytogen 881, which those two are Pima, and then Delta Pine 1522 and Fibermax 2334, but that those two are Uplands. And basically what we're trying to do is to being able to count how much fungus it is in the soil. So FOB4 is what we call inoculum density dependent, which means that the more fungus you have in the soil, the more severe the symptoms will look like. So the more damage the disease will, will have in your field, and also the other way around, the less amount in, in, in the soil, then the less amount of symptoms. And because of that, we decided to go ahead and directly count how much fungus there is in the soil when it interacts with a variety. So how variety selection can be also be used to manage the disease, basically. And um, so this is a picture taken by a drone where we mapped 
the, the densities or the, the amount of inoculum in the field. And over here, you can see this is the susceptible opland, which is delta pine 17, uh, 1522, followed by the resistant opland, and then this, the resistant PIMA, which is phytogen 881, and then the susceptible PIMA. And you can see over here that the susceptible PIMA, there's only one plant standing. So when we talk about susceptibility, is a very, very huge susceptibility, like nothing is able to survive. And some of the results um, that I just wanted to draw your attention to, when we take a look at Delta Pine 1522, which is our susceptible opalin, take a look at those numbers. This is the, the amount of soil quantity in the soil, and look at how Delta Pine 1522, even though it's able to yield more than uh, 14 100 pounds, it's still able to increase the amount of fungus in the soil. So using a susceptible upland, even though they're not highly susceptible, they will increase that inoculum and that fungus in the soil. So it cannot be used to address the problem and then mitigate the disease, basically. So if you suspect of having FLV4 or um, you're thinking about growing Pima particularly, uh, there are a few recommendations that I just want to, to provide to you. Number one, just give us a call. You can use your county agents or your IPM agents and they will give us a call. We can go and take some samples and test them for you. They're completely free of charge for, for farmers or um, crop consultants. So you just go ahead and, and, and we will run the whole thing, the molecular work and everything. So if you suspect of that, uh, number one, please do not share equipment in areas that have uh, that have been infected or that you suspect that are infected. Some people grow near El Paso area or near Fabens and also grow here. So it's important to not to move that. If you have to, then you should clean your equipment with a biocide. It could be Lysol or, or Clorox or there, there are many, after COVID-19, there are many biocides in the market. Uh, then uh, number three, if you go into a field that you know or you suspect that it's infected, wear rubber boots or a cover plastic. And if you don't have any, you can just need to watch your shoes very well because the disease can be spread by the soil also. And we might not be able to see it right away if you get the infection. Sometimes it takes some time to accumulate enough for, for us to, to see it. So the earlier that we can detect it, the earlier we can contain it. And then um, la the last one, number five, do not buy seed from El Paso area. El Paso is a known location, and, uh, we, and because it's seed transmittable, we just don't want to bring it here in any form. So I just wanted to cover very quick some of the projects that we have for 2021. And we are always looking for collaborators. So if you're interested to collaborating with us after 2020, we are really eager to go out there and work in the field because we have been um, in our homes for so long. So we have some uh, variety screening for the root knot and fusarium wheel. We always like to have multiple locations. And this year we, we have two. We're looking for a third one. So if you have uh, that disease in your field will be more than happy to, to work with you. Also, we have some peanut fungicide trials. I don't think anyone work, well, grows peanuts here, but we also have a cover crop and nematodes, so the effect of legume-based cover crops in nematodes, looking for alternatives and rotating out of rye or, or those grass ones, cover crops. And then we also have a spore trap systems and the Rennie Farm rotational study, and finally, a wheat trial. So if any of you are looking to grow wheat, as a cash crop this year, just come and talk to me very quick. We just want to take a look at your fields and just look for diseases and kind of give recommendations. That, that's all we want for that. And with that, I would just like to acknowledge the, our farmers, the ones that collaborate with us, Rick Fuston and Dwight Cookston, and all the county agents and everyone that have been involved, and Plains Cotton Growers that sponsor the Fusarium Wheel Trial, and um, Texas A&M AgriLife Research and Cotton Incorporated that sponsor the FOV4. Uh, work. And if you would like to collaborate, these are all the ways that you can get in contact with me. I am very accessible through social media, uh, Twitter, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, email, or just give me a phone call. I'm always just one call away. <laughs>